Hello. Okay. Today we're going to talk about Increlix or Macassarmin, uh, basically IGF-1, synthetic IGF-1. I'm not going to get into what IGF-1 is in any detail. I am planning um, a video on that. Excuse me a minute. There. That's all the OCD people. Um, I am planning a video on that in some depth, so I'm putting together some stuff to talk about the relationship between growth hormone, insulin, and IGF-1, and how they work together and against each other and all that malarkey. So, this is purely going to be about the actual drug in Crelix. So, it's synthetic IGF-1. It's a 70 amino acid chain, and it is exactly the same as natural, for all intents and purposes. Now, IGF-1 is the main signaling growth factor uh, in our bodies. It has an action on bone, muscle, internal organs, and various other elements. Um, Post-bone closure, its main impact is going to be on muscle tissue. However, long-term studies of use of this stuff have shown an increase in kidney and heart size and the onset of giantism in enlarged hands and facial features. However, it is notable to note that um, it is notable to note. Okay, never mind. Um, that uh, there was no deterioration in kidney function or cardiac issues related to the increases in size. Now, IGF one's counterpart is myostatin. So IGF one brings muscle mass up, myostatin brings it down. That's the balance we have within the body. It also increases the uptake of amino acids, uh, glucose, and fatty acids, similar to what insulin does. Um, and it's, it's got a very narrow prescription window. Um, generally speaking, low IGF-1 levels are due to low growth hormone levels, and normally people will be prescribed growth hormone. However, there are a few people that have an issue with the conversion um, and the creation of IGF-1 from growth hormone and insulin, and those are the narrow band of people that get recommended IGF-1. Its biggest issue by far is going hypoglycemic, low blood sugar. 42% in clinical trials suffered a hypoglycemic episode. Of those, 5 to 7% actually lost consciousness. It is essential that if you take this stuff that you eat within about 20 minutes of taking the drug. Um, now, hypo symptoms can range massively from person to person, but generally you're going to look at disorientation, mood changes, anger, sweat, cold clammy sweat, ting hands, pins and needles in the hands and feet, tingling sensation in the face, lips, tongue, metallic taste in the mouth. Um, severe cases, obviously a loss of consciousness, but you can also get very woolly headed, very disorientation and everything seems to move a little bit in slow motion. Sort of like your head will turn and then the world will come with it a couple of seconds later. Obviously, this can have a massive impact if you're operating machinery, driving, anything of that nature. So, you know, there is there is dangers involved with this. Other side effects are stuff like joint pain, uh, increased tonsil size, snoring, both from an increase in body mass and an increase in tonsil size. Um, it does elevate liver values, but it's got no real recorded hepatoxicity. So... Um, even though liver values seem to elevate while used, there does not seem to be any long-term issues. And as I said, there was no reduce or effect on function of renal or heart, even though there was some enlargement. Now, dosing-wise, um, basically the only dosing guidelines that are out there are the prescription dosing guidelines, which is 0.04 milligrams per kilo twice a day, working up to a dose of 0.1 two milligrams per kilo twice a day it is not recommended that you stay on this stuff for very long looking at eight to twelve week cycles um, and then some time off uh, there may be a reduction in insulin sensitivity so you may need to look at running products like berberine or having a period of a, a keto sort of style diet post usage unfortunately not many people will come forward about whether they've used this stuff. So I've not experienced it myself. It is very, very expensive. 
um, if I remember rightly over in the UK anyway at least you'll be looking at a, even at the 0.04 milligram dosage twice per day you're going to be looking in the region of 70 pound a day to to use this stuff so obviously very very expensive but my opinion is it is also very very effective and if money is no option then this stuff is definitely on the shopping list um as i said unfortunately people don't generally talk about use of this stuff and i have yet to actually meet anyone that can tell me how they have responded to it but looking at the science of it this stuff should make you grow and make you grow well unfortunately though it can make other things grow too so that needs to be borne in mind okay so that's it for Increlix igf1 uh, and I'll catch up with you soon with another video.